Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen news. From Alien Week to Alpha 3.17.2 updates to the Foundation Festival to roadmap stuff, we've got you covered in this highlights and summary of what's been going on over the last few days in the wonderful world of Star Citizen. The Foundation Festival is on its way and it looks like it's going to be running through the entirety of July. Cloud Imperium said, In the verse, the Foundation Festival is a month-long civic program that endeavours to strengthen the foundation of the community by encouraging citizens and civilians to volunteer with the local and imperial organisations. Here on Earth, we're celebrating our incredible Star Citizen community all month long. You can look forward to special guide system rewards, free event exclusive ship paints and more. Also, Clan Imperium are looking for six player orgs to feature as part of the celebrations. If you want to get involved, you want to get your org in there, uh, then I've put the links down below to try your luck. But yeah, the Foundation Festival, it's about um, getting new players in the game teaching them how to play Star Citizen, even if you've um, actually um, been playing Star Citizen for a while or a Star Citizen tourist, you can get someone to help teach you a particular gameplay mechanic like mining or be a better combat pilot or to do a set of missions. And if Alpha 3.17.2 is released and in a good state at some point in July, then that's going to be great because you have a load of new players playing a relatively stable version of Star Citizen. Let's have a look at this month's subflare. So June's vehicle of the month for RSI subscribers is the Anvil Spartan Armored Troop Transport. This month's flare for RSI subs is full outfits based on the enforcer uniforms worn by pyro-based gang, the Nine Tails. So if you're a Centurion um, subscriber, you get the Vaporware Skull Snap Enforcer outfit as part of your subscription. The special Skull Snap edition is a slick silver with geometric stylings and a screaming skull on the back of the jacket. Uh, Emperor subscribers get that same outfit, but they also get a Vaporware Toxic Fog Enforcer outfit. So the Toxic Fog edition is black with poisonous green gas accents and skulls on the front and back of the jacket. There's also the Vaporware Copperhead Enforcer outfit, which is available to all subscribers to purchase from the sub store. It has a snake wrapped around the front and back and left arm of the jacket. Also, if you're a sub, you can purchase those at any time. So you don't have to purchase them now. You can you can get them in the future. Get bam, they they'll be available to you if you become a subscriber later. But if you subscribe before the 14th of June, then you'll be in this sort of wave of subscriber flair. Also, I do want to elaborate on something again. As Cloud Imperium have mentioned in the past, their goal is to make most offerings available to be earned in game as well. So you don't need to buy these. You will be able to get them in-game. So lots and lots of subscriber flat items have been added into the in-game loot table as rare drops and typically they get added with a three-month exclusivity window. So um, these ones will not be added for about three months when it comes to loot pools, giving people that actually paid for them a chance to have them and show them off early I suppose. However, there are some digital items that are exclusive to events or promo items like Citizen Con goodies packs and things like that that will not be making their way into the in-game loot system. Also, Clan Imperium are working on a way to be able to recover your um, sort of flare items and your rare items um, that you may have purchased or whatever via some form of in-game system. But at the moment, you have to reset your account if you lose those items, if you want them back, um, or just go, ah, I'll get them back in the next major patch. Because if you're holding them when you die, you'd have to get back to your body to pick them up again. Let's take a look at a bit of a summary of the shows that they had this week. The Star Citizen Live this week focused on the community team at Clan Imperium. There wasn't too much in the way of tangible dev information. However, they did um, talk about maybe a bit of a push for the Moby Glass and some updates with that and racing updates over the next few months. The Inside Star Citizen this week looked at commodity kiosk updates and the Ninetales gang who terrorised the Stanton system. The Ninetales are going to be sort of returning more readily in Alpha 3.17.2 with a new Siege of Orison event, which I'm very much looking forward to. Very FPS focused and interesting sort of yeah, FPS assault um, where you need a lot of people to come and help you and um, take out these um, sort of uh, Ninetales that are on platforms and do objectives. For Alpha 3.18, there's going to be some commodity kiosk updates that will allow players to much more easily trade with stations and shops. You're going to be able to see what you can sell if um, it's run out of stock. Um, if it can't accept any more stock at this time, you'll be able to see your cargo and what you can't sell to a shop. Your, um, and even if the cargo is illegal or whatever, you can expect more commodity and cargo types in coming patches too. 
but loads of ergonomic improvements, loads of optimizations here that will make cargo and cargo hauling much more fun and uh, less fiddly. The roadmap update um, had some interesting updates as well for Alpha 3.17.2. We've got derelict reclaimer points of interest and missions sort of expanded upon and explained a bit more what's going on with them. So they've got a variety of handcraft narratively unique missions that have been created for the new derelict reclaimer wreck sites in space. But there's also a reclaimer settlement, which is going to be like on a planet, um, which I believe potentially we'll see on Microtech. Um, I know there's a lot of settlements planned for Daymar as well, but I literally think they mean by settlement, well, that's a, a reclaimer that's then been repurposed into being a bit of a, a landing zone or something interesting, right? Um, rather than just derelicts on the ground. This area will make use of uh, the ship for missions and loot too. The reclaimer is a massive spooky ship, and I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic for a point of interest and to be added to the mission system for, for various things. For the progress tracker though, so this isn't uh, in any particular patch, but they're working um, on things for the next few months and into 2023. We've got salvage, vehicle munching, which seems to have changed from more salvage, M-A-W. Salvage is now vehicle munching, it sounds like. So this is taking chunks of metal salvaged from ships um, and then makes them into a refinable material using the grinders on the reclaimer and or the vulture. It's exciting that they're expanding out salvage already. Obviously, we're expecting the first sort of tier of salvage, first salvage mechanics in 3.18, but hopefully it will then get the mining treatment so they'll refine that gameplay loop, adding lots and lots and lots more onto salvage until it's largely complete. Freight elevators uh, have also been added to the progress tracker, helping with loading and unloading mechanics that Clan Imperium have planned after the cargo factor, allowing for cargo to move across ships to landing zones and have times associated with loading and unloading. New player experience, making the game much more user-friendly at the start of the game. They're sort of focusing on the first 30 minutes or so of gameplay, but uh, it's a good start so that you can jump into Star Citizen without much knowledge of it and actually play it without going, oh my God, I need to watch a, a tutorial. Player machine physical interaction. Having buttons interactable, clicky, having function animations makes Star Citizen feel more real. And um, I, when I press a hotkey, I want my character to appropriately flick a button on the dash, a sort of dashboard. That makes sense, right? Work for the Aegis Retaliator base and the Anvil Crucible has also been added to the progress tracker. I'm looking forward to seeing these ships in game. There was a thread as well that I want to talk about, a little bit of drama. Big announcement, seriously. So the OP in this sort of thread says that Clan Imperium were going to start to use tw Twitch drops. So if you watch Star Citizen from certain streamers, you'd get sort of Star Citizen flare items or something. The thread did seem to have a range of opinions on this theory uh, from uh, non-streamers do loads of work as well. So like YouTubers and content creators um, do lots of work. So why would you just single out um, Twitch streamers? Content creators shouldn't be an elite class to then also having opinions of what well, this is no big deal or this is the worst thing or this is a good marketing move. However, it turns out that it's more of just a hoax or a misunderstanding as Zylo replied. I'm not sure of the context on this one, but we're not currently doing anything with Twitch drops, nor do we have any upcoming announcement to do so. We know that sort of Clan Imperium have got ties to Amazon in some ways. Obviously, they use their AWS for their servers and they're built on Lumbyard, although it's a much more um, sort of edited and changed version of a Lumbyard engine. I wouldn't rule out anything for the future because why would you? But it's certainly nothing they've got planned currently. Alien Week will be starting next week. We don't know exactly the schedule of when and what's happening, but I did see someone at Clan Imperium say something about the 16th, so maybe it starts on Thursday. I'm hoping we see a new ship or vehicle of some kind. Yeah, sort of stay tuned. We'll see more next week and then we'll know what's going on. This week's sneak peek appears to be of the Drake Corsairs cargo bay. I'm very excited by seeing work on this multi-crew explorer. It's a budget carrick for me, but it's a very useful sort of multi-role, multi-crew ship. And um, and just the idea of more exploration in game and actually getting exploration mechanics sort of fleshed out somewhat is uh, pretty awesome. There are some bar citizens going on around the world at the moment um, this weekend and a load of Clan Imperium devs. Um, have attended them, or are attending them. It appears Saturday's ones were very successful. I wanted to attend the one in the UK, in Manchester, but I still have the tail end of a cold, and I'm a little bit ill, so travelling with a cough in the UK at the moment probably would cause some panic. Also, no one wants my cold, 
That's the main thing. I don't want to infect everyone. But it does look like Clan Imperium want to do regular bar citizens again now and encourage them. They might run a large one like this once a year, like a weekender, to sort of go, yeah, star citizen, special bar citizen weekend every year. Um, but also they're, they're going to be supporting lots of minor ones throughout the year too. Boom. That's it for your star citizen news update this time. Are you excited for Alien Week? Anything you hope to turn up there? Are you looking for a new sort of ship or vehicle or um, some of the uh, other alien ships to go on sale? What about Alpha 3.17.2? We could um, start to see that actually go into testing coming up this week. Are you expecting that as well? Are you expecting it to be live by the end of the month or do you think it will bleed a little bit into July? Did you attend one of those bar citizens? What other features do you think 3.17.2 and 3.18 might hold? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Hello, it's me, the Queen. It's my Platinum Jubilee this year and safety and security are paramount. Lots of people ask me why we need a Queen and Lord VPN. I defend the world with my scepter and crown, preventing those who do it harm from carrying out their evil deeds, channeling the power of NordVPN.com forward slash board gamer and my divine right, I can overcome any obstacle and so can you by using the links below to get great deals and better internet accessibility, security and encryption atrocity. I don't know what that word was that I was trying to say, but I am the queen! I will never be defeated! Just like NordVPN.com sword slash board gamer! That wasn't the queen at all. It was me. It was board gamer. I've got to say this at the end, actually now, just in case someone says I'm impersonating the queen. Try to get her, but she was too busy. She says got like a busy weekend or something. Every month we have a ship giveaway. For June, we're giving away the newly released RSI Scorpius Heavy Fighter. This is a two-seater X-Wing styled ship with a powerful loadout and a turret that can move from the top to the bottom of the ship, giving it a much better range of firing arcs. To be in for a chance of winning that, comment on any of my videos made during this month. More details in the description below. Please also consider supporting the channel by becoming a member with the join button under my videos, or becoming a Patreon, or even donating with thanks button or donations in the descriptions below. Star Citizen is getting more and more flesh on its bones, and there's always news coming out, and we love to cover that, and we're only able to do that because of all of you watching and all the amazing people that go the extra mile. Whether it's commenting, sharing our videos, chucking money at us or whatever, thank you so much. I hope you have a great June. Please take care and I'll see you in the verse.